and welcome to another trip report. I am in transit at New York's John F. Kennedy Airport, having just arrived a few hours ago on Cathay Pacific Airways in first class from Hong Kong via Vancouver. I think that's probably my favourite travel experience yet and I really urge you to check out that video which is also on my channel. It was a fantastic experience. Anyway, on to today, travelling down to Miami on the Boeing 767 which you can see just over my shoulder there. Really looking forward to it so let's go and check it out. American Airlines used Terminal 8 at JFK Airport. This is actually JFK's largest terminal and mostly houses American Airlines as well as some other One World partners. American has its Admirals Club and flagship lounge located inside this terminal. Lounge access rules on American Airlines are fairly complex, but I was able to access the flagship lounge and its wonderful flagship dining facility because I was connecting through in international first class from Cafe Pacific. The flagship lounge and its dining room were completely refurbished a couple of years ago and the results are absolutely superb. Not only is it a wonderful place to watch aircraft, the food is pretty good too. The flagship lounge is American Airlines top rank lounge and it is pretty nice. It doesn't quite match the sumptuousness of the Asian carriers which you've seen earlier on in this world tour series. However, it's still pretty good for an American lounge. One of the facilities I really enjoyed is the quiet room which you can see here. It was completely deserted and was an oasis of calm away from the bustling main lobby. I'll repeat again though that the lounge access rules are complex and I've summarised them in a pinned post at the top of the comment section. Anyway, let's head off to the gate to catch our flight. Airports in the United States tend not to have one large super terminal like you'd expect in Europe, but actually a large number of smaller terminals. I really prefer this model as each individual terminal is much smaller and walking times are far less. Anyway, here's our aircraft, a Boeing 767 of American Airlines. Don't you just love that wingtip? Boarding is soon called and isn't it amazing that American need up to nine boarding groups? What are they all for? Like 65. Thank you. Those of you who are subscribed to me already know that this is the part of the video that I'll tell you to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Especially Instagram as on there I live blog all of my trips in real time using the stories function. I definitely recommend checking it out. A quick note about today's flight, we're taking a long-haul configured aircraft. In fact, all of American Airlines 767s are configured for long-haul and are primarily used on transatlantic routes. As you can see, this one has a 1-2-1 business class in a staggered formation. The even-numbered seats are the one you want if you want to be next to the window. I definitely recommend these, they're a lot more private and the ones in the aisle can make you feel like you're actually sitting in the aisle itself and you can get knocked by people rushing past you. So I guess you're wondering why, if this is a long haul configured aircraft, American Airlines is using it to run this two and a half to three hour hop down to Miami. The answer is, these aircraft operate out of more than one hub and New York to Miami are two of American's hubs and the aircraft is gonna to have to make that journey anyway. So why not fill it with passengers? One of the things I really like about this aircraft is they don't skimp on the space in the seat back pocket. I travel with a lot of stuff and I really appreciate that. A quick observation about the overhead lockers here on this 767. The ones over the middle seats are much smaller than the ones by the window seats. The ones by the window will take a full size carry on. Cheers, and here's to a good journey. Hello everyone, thank you for your attention. It's time to get you ready for takeoff.
As we climb out of JFK Airport and head south, let's have a quick look at the route that we're going to be taking today. We'll be covering 1,089 miles at an altitude of 37,000 feet and it will take us 2 hours 40 minutes. The next thing we're going to do is take a quick look at the seat on board this 767. This seat does turn into a bed as this is a long haul business class seat so all the controls are as you'd expect to find. The table deploys from the side console and is very sturdy. It's also possible to move this tray table to the side so that you can get out even if you've got a meal on it. There's a fair amount of storage in this seat but I prefer if this was a lockable closet to stop your belongings falling out. There's also socket and USB power, both of which worked, and a reasonably sized footwell. Because we're just on a domestic flight today, American Airlines doesn't provide the normal in-flight entertainment, which on this aircraft comes in the form of an iPad, which you would put just here. There's no denying the fact that despite the seats being new on this aircraft, the rest of it is pretty darn old. In fact, the in-flight entertainment for this flight is being delivered on overhead screens, something I've not seen for quite a while. The other thing that I haven't seen for quite a while is one of these channel selectors in the armrest. I can't believe these seats are so new and incorporate this feature. Blankets are also handed out, but they're so thin you probably don't want to bother with them. While we're on the subject of things that are thin and cheap, have a look at those divider curtains. I think they're the thinnest I've ever seen. What's the point? At least the hot towels are a bit thicker than the one you get on British Airways. There is Wi-Fi available on this flight. It's quite expensive, so I don't partake. However, if you choose not to pay for Wi-Fi, you can still access some entertainment through the American Airlines app. I tried to watch some live BBC World News here, and unfortunately wasn't successful. The news didn't load at all during the entire flight. One of the things that American carriers consistently get wrong is catering, so it was interesting to have a look at the dinner service. Like pretty much every other carrier, service starts with a drink and some nuts. Travelling around the US, even in first and business class, you're going to be lucky to get a proper meal on flights less than three hours long. Today's meal is dinner. There is no menu available to show you, however, there are generally two options. One, such as this chicken meat option, and a vegetarian option. And yes, there is something missing from this meal. There's no rice or potatoes or any form of starch at all. It's just chicken on green beans. It's really, really cheap and not good at all in a premium cabin. A lot of people consistently make the point on my channel that European business class with its blocked middle seats that are just the same as economy are unacceptable and to some extent that's true but the catering in the United States is extremely poor across the board. Fortunately there's not much you can get wrong with a cookie. There's an in-flight magazine available for you to read and one of the things of course that I love about in-flight magazines is getting inspiration for future trips such as these round the world itineraries. It's not long before we're descending into the Miami area after a fairly uneventful flight. One thing I do like about Americans Wi-Fi is the fact that you can check on your connecting flight. That's a really good idea. So let's recap on today's flight. This cost me £198 one way, however my ticket actually ends in Orlando, not Miami. Flying just from New York to Miami is much more expensive than flying on to Orlando and that's because airlines price tickets based on the market they're hoping to serve. New York to Miami of course being a really prime route. As far as a product and service go, to be honest on a two and a half hour to three hour flight down the eastern seaboard. Getting on a 767 configured in long haul is a tremendous novelty and much better than flying on a 737 or Airbus aircraft. I'm not sure I'd take one of American's 767s on a transatlantic route. To be honest, that market sees an awful lot of great products and the 767 that you've just seen is definitely not at the top of that list. 
And that's all I've got for you this time around. A bit of a come down from my mostly very good experiences in the Middle East and Far East with Asian carriers that you've seen earlier in this series. I'm actually here connecting now through to Orlando, which is going to be operated by American Airlines in their new 737 MAX. So I'm going to find out exactly what that's like, and that'll be the next video that you'll see on this channel. Until then, please subscribe, and I'll see you around.